At the core of the add-on, there is the Geometry Nodes modifier that builds smooth surfaces from curve profiles. You can define cross-sections and join them into the desired mesh surface. The curves that define cross-sections are called U-curves, and the curves that join them and form the lofted mesh are called V-curves. There are separate panels with parameters for them, for U, for V. You can set the type of U-curves, their shape, cyclic state, and direction as usual in edit mode. However, the V-curve can have the following properties in the V-parameters panel. Both support parameters for generating cross-sections with specified segment counts or lengths that affect loft resolution. Use the subdivide resample method to preserve the desired position of control points and shape of the loft surface, because base resample works evenly between profiles without recognizing its basic shape. The even topology parameter distributes U or V segments evenly for better control, but may disrupt topology flow on complex surfaces. Therefore, it is better to use it with a nearly flat or smooth surface to correct unnecessary topology stretching inherited from curve computation. Also, the modifier doesn't have to be on a curves object. In the input panel, you can select a source object or a collection of curves. After that, you are free to use modifiers unavailable for curve object, for example, bevel. In addition to the main modifier, there are modifiers that operate with the loft surface before and after. For example, this open hole can be closed with fill loft caps. You can simply fill first or last profiles using fill sockets. Triangles and ingons methods are basic and sometimes generate ugly faces. Filling method mesh is more advanced and avoids artifacts from triangular or ingon fills. Next modifier is designed to convert mesh objects to loft curves. Sometimes the shape of control points can be created or generated exclusively in mesh objects or based on them. It is useful for filling or extending the surfaces of another mesh object. This modifier performs its main function, but it is still under development, so not all necessary features are present. Data transfer from loft curves modifier transfers attribute values from U or V curves to the generated loft surface. Curves and their attributes must exist. So there is the output geometry panel in the main modifier. With all selected, it outputs both surface and axis curves. The carriers of all attributes are only curves. Alternatively, there is a custom input for U or V curves as an object or collection. This is necessary because the loft modifier has a technical limitation on the transfer of attributes from source curves. Unlike the previous one, this one transfers from the nearest loft surface instead of curves. Useful for geometries, which is often based on the same loft surface, and distorted due to strong deformations. Returning to the Loft Curves modifier, switch from Legacy to Loft Tools mode. It unlocks the full potential of add-on operators. There is a set of basic lofted shapes to start with. All essential operators are available from the main Pi menu and the 3D view sidebar panel. Pi menu shortcut should be enabled in Preferences. Select any part of your geometry and change the types of curves and handles like this. For Bezier type V curves, there are gizmos to manipulate their V handle positions. For more precise moving, there are Bezier handles transform operators. The operators translate, rotate, and scale are available in a separate Pi menu, which has a different shortcut. Align loft handles to cursor operator can help position the handles in some special cases, like when joining separate surfaces or bringing multiple handles together. A single geometry can have separate and independent lofted surfaces. Loft group operators allow selecting, separating, and merging. When duplicating a curve, you can control where you add it, before or after the selected curve. Shortcut may be enabled in preferences the toggle loft cyclic operator allows you to create loops on both U and V axes. The subdivide loft segments operator adds cross sections naturally along the existing lofted surface. Edit NURBS parameters, surface order, knots mode, and weight. We have already talked about node groups that work as modifiers or non-procedural operators. You can use them to build your own geometry nodes. They are marked with the suffix TDLTN.
The modifier version of Loft Curves node was designed for use in a modifier stack only. For building custom node trees, the non-modifier version is more appropriate. Set a group ID for each group of curves in order to split them into groups that can be lofted separately. In this case, I'll reuse the ID of each object from the collection. Now we can retrieve group ID from loft group ID node group. Set cyclic mode to the groups of curves, for example. Use the modulo node to make every second group cyclic along the v-axis. Random node for the u-axis. The spline type can be set for both u and v, but with different nodes. I'm setting them both the same. For this example, I'm setting all v surfaces to the Bezier curve type because the following nodes work exclusively with them. The loft handle position node helps retrieve global or relative positions of left and right handles. For the next example, I am using the NURBS type. Knots mode typically has to be non-endpoint when the loft is cyclic. NURBS order makes the surface look smoother on higher values, but also requires more cross sections. For weights, choose specific control points and see how it gets closer to the control point. As you may notice, it gives a lot of options to manipulate surface shape with NURBS type. The output loft geometry has some important attributes for reuse in your procedural systems, normal, U-tangent, and V-tangent. Additionally, you can read if the pattern is cyclic along a particular axis, whether it is a surface or a curve. Factor, length, loop index, length, and number of points per axis. Endpoint selection allows you to select an arbitrary number of end loops. And this example contains a loft UV map node, which allows you to use noise texture with coordinates that are easy to control. Its value can control the intensity of the normal displacement to make the shape distorted. In the shader graph of an applied material, there is a loft info node with many useful attributes for shading. UV maps for texture mapping, surface tangents, normals, and parameters of cross sections. So these are the basics needed to start using loft tools. For more detailed and up-to-date information, check the documentation page. There are plenty of necessary and structured descriptions and explanations. This is my second big project that I developed together with my brother. Initially, I developed it for myself because I had no tools for loft modeling, but over time it became an add-on that we are ready to share, and it is now available for purchase via the links in the description. Let me know if you are interested in more detailed tutorials with this add-on. Thank you for your support.